The final item of business is members' business debate on motion 7149 in the name of Kate Forbes on Serve Scotland. This debate will be concluded without any questions being put, and I would ask members who wish to speak in the debate to press the request to speak buttons. And I call on Kate Forbes to open the debate with around seven minutes, please, Ms Forbes. Thank you, Presiding Officer. I'd first like to start by thanking colleagues who are participating in this debate, and I'd also like to recognise those in the gallery who have come to listen to the debate, recognising that many others would have been here if they had been able to be here. So thank you very much. To many people, religion or church evokes images of damp walls and cold pews, or an empty but iconic building standing tall and proud, perhaps too tall and too proud for some people's sensibilities. And yet, presiding officer, at the heart of the Christian faith is a story. It's a story that Jesus told about the Good Samaritan, a title that might be the stuff of Sunday school stories, but is every bit as relevant today as it ever was. Because it's the story of somebody left battered and bruised, confused and alone by all that life threw at him. And there are still too many in Scotland that are still there, living with abuse, addiction, homelessness, loneliness, poverty and fear, forgotten, abandoned and alienated from society, a victim of this world's selfishness, greed and evil desires. And for those who know the story of the Good Samaritan, you'll know that individual after individual, with all the right clothes and all the right qualifications, who looked every bit the story of success, hurried past this poor guy, left in the gutter of life, with hardly a glance and certainly no helping hand. And so the man remained, still forgotten, still abandoned, and still alienated from society, until a stranger came along, someone who was vulnerable himself from another part of the world, perhaps subjected to abuse himself, and certainly not in step with contemporary culture. And he stopped, and it says, took pity on the man and went to him and bandaged his wounds. He looked after him until he was ready to face the world again. And presiding officer, that story motivates people in churches across Scotland to serve the most marginalized in our society. And this afternoon's debate is about churches who stop. Yes. Dave Stewart. Thank you, President Officer. I'm very grateful for the member giving way. Uh, is the member aware of the excellent work done by the Inverness Street Pastors? I previously had the opportunity to go out on one of the patrols. I was inspired by the work that they do. Would the member agree that, like the Good Samaritan, they did not walk on the other side of the road? Kate Forbes. I thank the member for that intervention. I think that's a great example of what I was going on to say, that there are so many charities and churches who do choose to stop who don't just walk on by and who stop to help the helpless and who give their time, their care and effort for those who need it. Often when we are tucked up in bed and they're out in the cold, the wind and the rain. And they follow in the footsteps of those in Scotland who've been a voice for the voiceless and advocates for the marginalised for centuries. In fact, many church-based charities were established decades ago when the public sector was much, much smaller and it was left to individuals and churches to care. People like Thomas Chalmers with his commitment to education, or Tom Allen with his desire to see social work established in Glasgow. And of course, the public sector has an important role to play, and I thank the Minister, Kevin Stewart, for taking part this evening. But, presiding officer, tonight we are particularly highlighting Serve Scotland, a network of charities like Blythswood Care, Bethany Christian Church, and Glasgow City Mission, who follow gospel teachings to radically love their neighbour and who see every human being as born with inherent dignity and worth. And voluntary work from faith charities produces almost £100 million of economic impact every year in Scotland. And whilst that is a whopping big number, the impact on individuals' and families' lives cannot be quantified. In fact, at its heart, this debate is about people across Scotland who see the need, who recognise the brokenness in our society and who hate, who hate with such vengeance 
the injustice that is endemic in our society, who hate the abuse of children, who hate the loan sharks that heap debt on vulnerable people, who hate the revolving door of homelessness, who hate the poverty that entraps families, who hate the fact that we live in a world that is so rich and yet people starve. But rather than just hate injustice, they are also loving others and showing compassion. I'm sure my colleagues, and again, I'm very grateful for those who are speaking tonight, I'm sure they will be able to highlight specific examples from their own constituencies of how church-based work and faith communities have helped individuals and families. But I started with a story about the Good Samaritan, and I'd like to finish with one. The problem is that there are so many stories I couldn't pick one to finish on. There are stories of children living and sleeping on the streets of India, now safe. There are stories of men and women who have been homeless in our cities for years and years and now have their own place to stay. There are stories of mothers and fathers who have been borrowing food and skipping meals from other people to feed their children. And yet all of these stories have a positive outcome because of the volunteers, some of whom are in the gallery, because of the volunteers and the churches across Scotland who didn't just choose to sit on a pew and talk, but chose to get out and act on their faith. And for all, for all the stories that we hear, there are plenty more who don't have a positive outcome yet. And that's why I want to start this debate by applauding the vital work of churches who hate injustice like we do, who love people and who won't be content until peace and love reign supreme in Scotland. Thank you very much. Uh, may I ask those in the public gallery not to clap or cheer or boo or hiss or otherwise? <laughs> Uh, perhaps at the end, um, when the Parliament's closing, we'll have the time to show appreciation. And I call John Mason to be followed by Maurice Corey. Thank you, uh, Presiding Officer, and many thanks to Kate Forbes for bringing this important debate today. As she has said herself, there are many examples of great work carried out uh, by church-based community groups, and uh, I'd like to mention one or two of these. For example, during the winter in Glasgow, there has been a night shelter in recent years uh, which has provided a uh, shelter for people who otherwise would be sleeping outside. This has been organised by Glasgow City Mission and hosted in the building of the Lodging House Mission, which itself uh, was an offshoot of the Church of Scotland, uh, but helped by many individuals. And it has to be said that at first Glasgow City Council was sceptical as to whether this was actually needed and whether there really were people sleeping rough in Glasgow. But sadly, there have been regularly 40 homeless folk using it each night in recent winters, and folk who would otherwise have been sleeping outside in the winter. And I'm glad to say that the City Council has become much more involved in recent times and have actually been engaging with the men, and it is mainly men, although there are a few women, eh, in the shelter, to try and get them settled more quickly into proper accommodation which has been a good example, I think, of the third sector and the public sector working together. And perhaps we do have to accept that sometimes the public sector is always going to be a bit cumbersome and a bit bureaucratic, while the third sector, be that faith-based or otherwise, can be a bit more nimble. Another example which is linked to Bethany Christian Trust is Safe Families for Children, who have a base in the east end of Glasgow. Their basic concept is to try and help families, support families, often with just a single parent, who otherwise would uh, just not quite manage to cope on their own. So before things go as far as fostering or other more permanent and more formal options, uh, they are able to step in and a single parent who is looking after the children full time can get a few days respite at a time with the children looked after by another family. And I just uh, mentioned too the church which I myself am I'm involved in uh, within Easter House in Glasgow. It happens to be an East, uh, a Baptist church. And that's an area that has changed much uh, over the years, as people may know. The needs have changed, and so the church input has changed too. 
For example, we used to run a breakfast club when the schools were reporting that kids were arriving at school in the morning having had no food that day. And in fact, in many cases, the only meal the child had was their school lunch with no other food at all. However, Glasgow City Council uh, has started running its own breakfast clubs within schools, and there's not the same need for the churches and other groups to do that. However, Easter House has changed over the years. When I moved in 27 years ago, it was almost entirely white and English speaking. But things have changed, and now there are many more from ethnic minorities. And we have a number of folk uh, now whose English is pretty limited. And so we as a church have started running ESOL, or English for Speakers of Other Languages, uh, classes often in a more informal way than the colleges can do. Again, we run a cafe with free tea, uh, coffee, and inexpensive food, which is attractive for adults with learning disabilities and their carers. Many of them used to go to the day centres, which Glasgow City Council used to have until they closed them down, leaving folk with nowhere to go. And the carers themselves often have a very limited budget and appreciate being able to bring uh, their client into somewhere warm and dry and for a friendly chat. Now, I would argue that our church is not unusual and many Christian and other faith-based groups are doing similar work. And I do wonder, however, if there is a bit of bias in some quarters against community groups because they are church-based. That is certainly the feeling of some individuals and some churches. There can be a feeling in certain circles that the modern way to go is secular and humanist, and that all faith-based activity is second-rate. But the motion mentions a modern plural Scotland, and my understanding of plural or pluralistic is that we are a tolerant society, accepting that there is more than one way of doing things. So if we take something like food banks, if we're agreed that the aim is to provide food for people who do not have enough, it should not really matter who supplies the food, Coming from a faith background, I'm delighted if a humanist or anyone else is supplying the food. But I would just hope that someone from a more secular background would also be delighted if Christians are doing this work. Again, I thank Kate Forbes for bringing forward this motion. Can I have Maurice Corey to be followed by Graham Day? Thank you, Presiding, uh, Deputy Presiding Officer. I'd like to begin by firstly thanking Kate Falls for bringing forward her motion into the debate tonight and bringing forward the work of Serve Scotland Coalition to this chamber's attention. And it is very good to have members of Serve Scotland in our gallery with whom I spoke this afternoon on their stand outside the chamber. We welcome them here warmly. Churches and the organisations they support in our communities have great capacity to bring around positive change in the lives of individuals, communities and the nation. Research by the Cinnamon Network shows that there are over 9,000 social action projects being run by churches and other faith groups, providing over 9 million volunteer hours and 2.2 million paid staff hours, all of which cumulatively provides, cumulatively provides £93 million to our economy. In the West Scotland region where I serve, they are, <coughs> where I represent, there are numerous churches and Christian organisations working hard, running groups and projects supporting the local community with help of Serve Scotland. For example, the Mogai United Free Church <coughs> runs a craft group that supports local charities and organisations. Their website highlights a few examples of their work, such as the blankets they have knitted have been given to local daycare centres, care homes and maternity units. They have also made hats which they have sent to the Sailor Society, hospital baby units, our troops in active service overseas and to the homeless, and also support has been given to our armed forces veterans in several ways. <coughs> Members of this craft group have also knitted poppy uh, have also knitted poppies that which they've sold with the proceeds being given to Erskine and Poppy Scotland. Another example is the Way Ahead Group Stroke Club run in Bears Den by the Killamont Parish Church, which helps support those who have had strokes by holding weekly meetings and afternoon sessions, uh, which include a varied program of physio run by professional physiotherapists, board games, carpet go golf and, or bowls and an afternoon tea. The third example is the sterling work that various organisations do in this work of the street pastors who play an active role in strengthening our communities and making our streets safer and our communities safer with groups of street pastors working in Inverclyde, Kirkintilloch and Paisley. Where the work of Serve Scotland comes in and is so useful to these groups is that it is providing a network where they are able to share best practice, ensure that there is no local duplication of work and create a clear picture of both provision and the, and in the gaps in the services provided in our communities. To help these aims, Serve Scotland has set up four strategic aims of their 
for their group, which are to represent the church to do the national and local government areas on the great community social action work that they do, facilitate the network of Christian social action leaders in order to allow the sharing of best practice, inform the church of national and local community social action policy development, and to, restore, and to resource local volunteers with advice in fundraising and development work in order to help them continue their work. All of these are welcome because if Serve Scotland wasn't doing this work, then I believe it would be necessary to create an organisation that would. And finally, Deputy Presiding Officer, whilst um, meeting with the third sector initiative team in Helens Run Lomond only yesterday, I witnessed the importance of Serve Scotland to the needs of our communities and there demonstrating its great work. Thank you. I call Graham Day to be followed by Rhoda Grant. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer. Let me begin with an apology to you and the Chamber owing to my being uh, required to host an event in Parliament shortly. I'll have to leave the debate before it concludes. Last night, I shared the fact I intended contributing to this debate with my 80-year-old mum, a lifelong churchgoer. Her response was, well, that'll be interesting. She was, to put it mildly, amused by the prospect. You see, although I was raised in a Christian household, I've turned out, well, there's no other way to put it, an avowed atheist. I think my mum fears another collapsing beam episode, if not the full chamber roof falling in, should I rise to praise the activities of religious groups. But at the risk of tempting fate, let me genuinely congratulate my friend and colleague Kate Forbes on securing this debate. Because I think we absolutely should recognise good work of the nature that serves Scotland seeks to coordinate, assist and promote. And in so doing, celebrate the contribution of religious groups within Scottish society to making it the society that it is. Sign officer, personally, I'm increasingly unsettled by the push by some to denigrate and marginalise those of faith, any faith, and to dismiss both their views and their right to hold those views. I was raised to respect the reasonable and deeply held beliefs of other folk, however much I might struggle to understand those, and more than that, to be appreciative of the positive contribution to society that they might make. And both as an MSP and prior to becoming one, I've seen many examples of faith groups converting their beliefs into welcome, praiseworthy action. In our broad in my constituency, for example, churches there have now been running a street pastors project for the past six years. As members will know, as Dave Thompson and Kate Forbes highlighted, street, Forbes, uh, street pastors go out, to week, go out on weekend nights. Uh, when those, uh, sorry, Dave Stewart, my apologies, Mr. Stewart, Mr. Thompson. Uh, when those of us are, uh, who are not hitting the pubs and clubs are comfortably in bed, to provide, they're out providing a listening ear and make sure people who may well be feeling the effects of having had too much alcohol are OK. They, for example, provide flip-flops to make the walk home that bit easier. Those involved with the scheme go through extensive regular training, including in relation to drug awareness. Last year, I was delighted to attend the 10th anniversary celebrations of the Havala Project, which is run by members of St Andrew's Church in Arbroath. Havala began in response to the desire of some members to reach out to the many in the local community who, for whatever reason, often found themselves excluded, isolated and unloved. Havala helps people struggling with addictions. Volunteers have also visited some of the service users when they've been sent to prison. And some of those uh, people, when they've left prison, make Havala their first port of call, as they know of the welcome that they will get. Angus Council and the Church of Scotland's Go For It Fund provide financial support, and the project was in 2015 presented with the Queen's Award for Voluntary Service. St Andrew's Church, working alongside the Old and Abbey Church in Arbroath, also operates a food bank in the town. As well as the members of these two Kirks donating food, supplies come from other churches and individuals way beyond our broth have visited the food bank and know of the invaluable service that is providing to people in times of crisis. The saying may well be that charity begins at home, but Angus South churches also help to play their part further afield. Members will be aware of the Blythewood shoebox appeal, which Kate Forbes touched on, which delivers presents to children in Eastern Europe who may well be going without the joys of Christmas. The old parish church in Kerry Muir joins many other churches in acting as a collection point. And returning to St Andrew's Church in Arbroath, 10 years ago, the Dulcito Project was started there following a group of seven young people visiting the Namasu Orphan School and seeing the tough conditions that the children lived in. Now an independent charity, it operates two daycare centres and orphan residences in Malawi, which care for more than 300 children and provide jobs for 30 staff. It's also working to build another classroom and pay for another teacher and is currently working with the local government to build a health centre so that people do not need to take a long trip to receive medical attention. 
that's responded to flooding uh, and food shortages in the communities. To conclude, presiding officer, I welcome the coordinating role being taken by Service Scotland, both across churches and reaching out to other services, and thank all of the church groups playing active roles in my constituency and indeed across Scotland. Presiding officer. May I have Roger Grant to be followed by Kenneth Gibson. Thank you, presiding officer. And can I congratulate Kate Forbes for securing this debate, highlighting the excellent work carried out by the Serve Scotland Coalition, a coalition of church-based community organisations that look at the needs of their local communities and provide services for them. And Serve Scotland provided me with a list of the organisations working in the Highlands and Islands ahead of this debate. And while I was aware of them all, what struck me from the list was that every age was, was, was covered. There were projects working for the very youngest to the very oldest in our society. In my region, street pastors are a common sight in our city, streets in Inverness to some of the small towns. And, and Kate Forbes and Graham Day mentioned that they were normally tucked up in their bed when they were working. I would have to say that I've seen them in, in practice on cold, wet nights, um, helping people who are maybe a little worse for the wear. And I've also seen them stop and have a chat with people who maybe just aren't very clear about what they're going to do next. Sometimes they must feel like tourist guides in the summer because people are asking them where to go and what they can do. But they're providing a lifeline for people who find themselves in very difficult situations. And they work with other organisations, both voluntary and statutory, to help people. And their presence on the street also makes people safer, feel safer. And I know that myself, maybe walking home and you see a street pastor and you immediately feel much safer because you're not on your own eh, walking along the streets. And they're very much hands-on. Um, and there are other organisations as well who have grown to offer a range of services. And Kate Forbes talked about Blytheswood Care, who I would like to talk about for a little while. Um, <clears throat> I remember when Blytheswood Care started, and that's maybe giving away my age, uh, where I grew up, a local minister, Jackie Ross, who was very active in the community as well, saw the plight of Romanians and decided to send practical help. A number of other people got involved collecting goods and shipping them to Romania. And I remember it being a great community effort to collect useful items that could be sent. I recently spoke to a friend who was one of the drivers that volunteered, and he was regaling me with stories of these times. And some of them were hilariously funny, but some of them were very terrifying. It's hard to imagine now how difficult and trying these journeys were, but they brought much needed help and practical support to the people they were catering for. And Blytheswood Care continued to work in Romania and indeed uh, beyond Romania and other parts of the world, but now they're better known for their work at home delivering food banks locally. And I'm pretty sure that those early founders never foresaw the circumstances where the need they catered for abroad would manifest itself on their own doorstep, something we all wish wasn't required. However, they are there providing much needed assistance at home and abroad. They employ 125 people, but have in excess of 1,000 volunteers providing those much needed services. And while I truly wish people didn't need their help, there are many people who owe their lives to it. This debate highlights the practical impact that the Christian community have catering for need in their communities and beyond. Often people, often to people who don't share their religious belief, but that doesn't matter as long as they can help. These organisations depend on volunteers who give of their own free time to help others. It's right that the Parliament should pay tribute to their work. Kenneth Gibson to be followed by Ross Greer. Thank you, presiding officer. And first, I'd like to thank my colleague Kate Forbes for lodging this motion and securing this evening's debate. It will undoubtedly help to raise awareness surrounding the invaluable work carried out by churches and other faith groups across Scotland, whilst also encouraging more people to get involved in this invaluable initiative. The topic of community empowerment has featured strongly in many discussions and debates in this chamber over the years, and is certainly a matter in which the SNP government has always placed a great deal of significance and importance. While there are, of course, many ways in which a community can seek to be empowered, 
One surefire method is to create the necessary channels for those with the ability and desire to help, to connect with those in need of this help. This is, in effect, perfectly embodied by the services undertaken by Serve Scotland. After its official launch in November 2015, it has been of great interest to follow Serve Scotland's development and its mission to change Scotland for good. It is therefore inspiring to see this umbrella group which brings together the Christian voluntary sector at both a national and local level still growing and thereby positively influencing communities almost two years on. In challenging times, people find themselves dealing with hardship and difficulty, often seemingly alone. Yet they are not alone. Churches and faith groups are there to offer invaluable support that can make all the difference, from helping people make ends meet by setting up food banks and community cafes, to running night shelters and addiction services for those, for those most at risk. Their dedication to serving the poor, vulnerable and marginalised people in their own communities and beyond is invaluable. However, I also recognise the need for this national initiative to be a touchstone for the voluntary sector and those seeking to connect with it. Since its inception, Serve Scotland has helped to bridge the gap which can appear when secular groups or local authorities need to work with local churches. This is achieved by establishing networks of churches of all Christian denominations and in doing so, granting these diverse bodies the ability to band together to better identify community needs, joint areas of concern and access to streams of funding, ultimately allowing efforts to be more far-reaching than any made individually. While Serve Scotland is currently only operational in certain pilot areas, this is a long-term project which is constantly expanding. This expansion is most welcome, and in fact I understand that research is already being undertaken by the initiative to show the value and volume of work already being carried out by churches and Christian organisations. Throughout Scotland, uh, having witnessed it firsthand, I know that in my own constituency of Cunningham North, such organisations play a valuable role in many lives and go out of their way to offer in invaluable support to many many families and individuals, regardless of their background or denomination. I'm sure this evidence is mirrored in arguably every community around the country in which these organisations are present, and therefore I believe that the findings of the aforementioned research will be welcome and effective in improving services even further. This is crucial not only in recognising the positive impact of voluntary work, but also engaging the future needs of communities. Serve Scotland's mission to identify needs and, as such, what to deliver transformational projects which meet these needs is a testament to the strong sense of community spirit that drives so many people in Scotland and one I fully support. With an overarching and universal goal to help those less fortunate, regardless of background or denomination, I'd like to take the opportunity to congratulate everyone involved with Serve Scotland thus far and look forward to seeing what further positive influences it will bestow upon communities going forward. Presiding officer, I also pay tribute to all those who volunteer to provide the services discussed here today, from food banks to support work and beyond, both in my own constituency and across Scotland as a whole. Community work undertaken by churches and other faith groups inspires just that, faith. Faith that Scotland is working towards an increasingly tolerant, inclusive and plural society, and faith that as Serve Scotland expands, so too will the abilities of the organisations encompassed within it to continue making a difference to the lives of people in need. Ross Greer to be followed by Stuart Stevenson. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Like colleagues, I'd like to thank Kate Forbes for bringing this motion to Parliament today and giving us the opportunity to celebrate the huge, often unrecognised contribution that communities of faith make across our country. It's been the case for some time now that when faith-based organisations make the news, it's more often for negative than positive coverage. But these organisations provide such a range of services and support across every last city, town and village in our country that if they were to go, we simply wouldn't be able to cope. This is particularly true in this era of austerity, of public services being hammered by cuts and a concerted effort to reduce the supportive role of the state. I know from my own congregation at Bearsden Cross Church the sheer volume of services that are provided by volunteers. Take, for example, our Mind That Song Club ran with Alzheimer's Scotland for those with dementia and for their carers. The club uses singing to bring together people who can often feel isolated and overwhelmed, using the well-documented ability of music to bring back long-forgotten memories. And over the last few months, our church has worked with others across Eastern Bartonshire to welcome four Syrian families who have settled here through the resettlement scheme. Every week, they come in our, to our church halls to learn English as adults and children and to discuss the support they need to build their lives here. Again, while working alongside the paid staff of the local council, 
So much of this activity is driven by volunteers, like my friend Peter Drummond, who has given anything up to 40 hours a week recently, doing everything he can to make our new community members feel welcome. And these are relatively recent examples. For over uh, 30 years, the churches in my area have been involved in BEAM, Bears Den and Mogai's talking newspaper for those with sight and other accessibility challenges. And we're not the only ones, of course. Broughton St Mary's here in Edinburgh has done wonderful work with the LGBT community and with other congregations, denominations and faiths who want to improve the support they can provide to LGBT, LGBT members of their own faiths and to the wider community. And these are just some personal examples of the thousands of projects that Church of Scotland congregations are involved with. And the Kirk is hardly the only one. I know, for example, firsthand of the exceptional work of Glasgow City Mission, which has transformed the lives of thousands of vulnerable people in and around the city with their emergency night shelter, with parenting classes, services to help those trying to find employment after or during periods of homelessness, addiction and other challenges. The City Mission's ethos includes a commitment to unconditional acceptance, one rooted in their Christian foundations. But this wonderful work, of course, is far from the exclusive domain of Christians. I know from the Jewish community in my own region, a small community, but one that provides a huge number of services. Jewish Care Scotland, for example, organise everything from kosher food banks to mental health support and projects to integrate refugees and asylum seekers into their new communities. And the likes of Cosgrove Care and Crossreach, ran by the Church of Scotland, provide such high quality care services Sorry, colleagues will be aware I'm having technical issues. Um, it provides such high quality support services for those with additional support needs, the elderly, vulnerable young people, and so many others that they're some of the largest social care providers in the country. Indeed, I believe that Crossreach is the largest provider out with the local authorities in Scotland. You're going to have to indulge me for a second. That is much appreciated. Thank that you. was very nice of you, Kate, for <laughs> <That's fine. laughs> Now to think of a question. Uh, no, would, would the member, having um, been a member of a church himself, in what way does his um, church membership shape his politics? Ross, I very much appreciated from my colleague. That uh, serves me right for trying to rely on technology. Um, and it takes me very nicely to what I was trying to reach for. For me personally, the Christian motivation to provide for your community, the Christian motivation uh, that led me into politics can be very neatly explained by a wonderful line that I found in an article written by a young Christian social justice activist in Australia who said, Jesus was overtly on the side of the poor, the excluded, the ignored, the disenfranchised and the exploited. He was on their side when it damaged their, his reputation, his earning potential and any hopes he had of moving up the ranks of religious and political power. He was on their side when he drove out the price manipulators and the rent seekers in the temple courts, and he was on their side when it cost him his life. That's what's always motivated me in my faith and my politics, the desire to serve others. Our faith communities have given so much, are still giving so much, every single day in this country. In almost every case, they do so without asking for recognition, and often they don't receive any. So again, I'd like to thank Kate Forbes for the opportunity to stand here today and say thank you. Right, well, it didn't cut your time down any, did it, Mr Greer? <laughs> and on that note, uh, at this moment, due to the number of members who do want to speak in the debate, I'm minded to accept a motion without notice under Rule 8.14.3 to extend the debate by up to 30 minutes. And I would invite Kate Forbes to move a motion without notice. Uh, to move without notice. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, the question is that the debate be extended by up to 30 minutes. Are we all agreed? Yes. That is then agreed, and I now call, I can't remember who came next, Stuart Stevenson, yes, um, to be followed by Finlay Carson. Um, and I thought I was nearly as memorable as Kate Forbes, um, whom I congratulate for uh, providing the time uh, for this uh, debate. Uh, Serve Scotland uh, aims to empower the poor, the vulnerable, the marginalised, it unites local churches and community organisations. It facilitates communication among these organisations. It documents what has been done so that churches and organisations generally can learn from these, those experiences. The beauty of Serve Scotland is that it's a nationwide organisation, but it facilitates local actions. For example, in my constituency of Bamshire and Buchan Coast, the River Church has been a presence in Banff since 2001. 
It houses a thriving food bank. It's stocked both by donations from local people and through a partnership with Tesco uh, Supermarket in Banff. They also have a well cafe that offers a weekly hot meal and company for those in need. Services like that in Banff, as elsewhere, require local power of volunteers. People who sacrifice time and bring their talents to make the efforts possible. Another example, like in Inverness, as referred to by David Stewart, is the Peterhead Street Pastors, an organisation that began in 2003. And I was uh, privileged to recently attend the induction of uh, some new street pastors. It's a living, expanding, terrific organisation. They work. Uh, they walk the streets of Peterhead during the wee small hours of the night. I've been out on several occasions with the police on a Saturday night in the environment in which the street pastors are working. I know the kind of challenges they inevitably are meeting for. Without any side, without any bias, they care for, listen to, and help those who may be out and about and in difficulty of any kind. True to the goal of Serve Scotland, these groups are a light that shines in the darkest places of society. Uh, these particular groups help to secure the basic needs of food and safety for people who are on the margins. Uh, other groups provide shelter, education, addiction, recovery, support, to name a few services. Uh, among such, uh, in, again in Peterhead, is the Salvation Army, who I recently visited uh, at their weekly lunch uh, that they provide for precisely uh, these kind of disadvantaged people. And I must say the soup and pudding is absolutely first class. Uh, and they, of course, work with others to get the raw materials that they prepare uh, for those who need. But groups do much more than simply address people's basic needs. Uh, they're reaching out in love, anchoring themselves and the people they serve to communities. They create ties that strengthen the civil fabric of our towns and of Scotland as a whole. Serve Scotland assists local organisations by exchanging information. It links groups together to share experiences. It helps churches and voluntary bodies get the word out about projects so they get the help and support they need. And we're in uncertain times. It's heartening to see this effort, to see engagement and education, not elitism, to see generosity and altruism, not greed, to see service and tolerance in place of self-interest. We all here in our contributions uh, are gratefully acknowledging the local volunteers and organisations for their time and efforts to reach out in their communities. And we commend the wider coalition of Serb Scotland for their bold vision of a tolerant, contemporary and cooperative Scotland. Presiding officer. May I have Finlay Carson to be followed by Fulton McGregor. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. I'm delighted to have this opportunity to speak in this member's debate on Serve Scotland, and I'd like to congratulate Kate Forbes for giving us the opportunity to, to do so. Launched less than two years ago, Serve Scotland is a passionate movement which brings inspiration and creativity to encourage the Christian faith community to serve the poor, the vulnerable, and the marginalised. Serve Scotland helps to highlight the invaluable role that church-based organisations can play in our modern world. I will never forget a sermon delivered by a minister of mine who will remain nameless. He said it was really important for Christians not to expect, thank or praise for the work they did in the community on behalf of the church. And indeed, he was often seen as very ungrateful, which I knew, know he certainly was not. That sermon sat uncomfortably with lots of people in the congregation because words of praise and thanks can be a spur for a lot of people. And I know they didn't just do it for the glory, but a little pat on the back often helps. But Serve Scotland has become the champion of these individuals and groups. Serve Scotland does not exist to promote any one church or organisation, but rather all the good work being done by churches and organisations for the good of all people and communities in Scotland. And I would like to thank uh, Serve Scotland for bringing uh, this brief forward and allowing us to thank uh, the communities and individuals that help. I would also like to thank Serve Scotland for giving us a briefing to give us some idea of the, the work that is carried out across Scotland. 
It estimates that there's 9,000 social action projects run by churches, £93 million pounds worth of economic impact, 9 million volunteer hours, 2.2 million paid staff hours, and these are all massive numbers, but as Kate said, we must remember these actually relate as much to individuals. The church has been an important part of my life, as I know as it has for many of the people in this chamber and right across Scotland. And now it's much more about a Sunday morning. Of course it's about faith, it's about community, and it's about responsibility. And more increasingly, it's about church without walls. So it's no more of the damp, dingy walls. It's about getting out into the community. But this has always been the case. It's not a new thing. As we heard, love your neighbor, and we've heard the story of the Good Samaritan. And organizations like Serve Scotland are an important part of that church community. Thousands of volunteers taking time to serve those who really need a bit of help, whether that be in food banks, debt advice, night shelters or refugee support. This kind of social action is so important to a prosperous and compassionate society. I want to touch on two fantastic examples of this Christian social action through Serve Scotland and my constituency of Galloway and Western Fries. Good Companions is a project run by Maxelton West Church of Scotland and Dumfries for its senior mem members. The project provides regular meetings giving its members lively companionship, speakers and entertainment for the young at heart. And in Castle Douglas, the New Life Church, as well as its regular services, New Life provides a range of groups and projects for the local community, including Helping Hands, Food Banks, Elderberry's Lunch Club, Hub Youth Club, Parent Talk, and Cap Debt Centre. Even out of that uh, uh, compass of churches, my own church always remember getting the little tubes of Smarties, and we ate the Smarties and then filled it with 20 pence pieces uh, to help uh, for water aid abroad. Or Gatehouse Community Church that provides music and youth club events for all the young folk in the village. These are examples of people who have contributed and it's important to recognize that they're showing their Christian responsibility to help the poor and vulnerable. And they are actually taking action. Serve Scotland are empowering these organizations to ensure that their work has the best possible impact on our communities. I wish Serve Scotland all the very best in their continuing journey. The last two speakers in the open debate are Fulton McGregor, followed by Murdo Fraser. Thank you, President Officer, and thanks to my colleague Kate Forbes for bringing this uh, motion and debate to the Chamber and congratulating Serve Scotland on their establishment and the work that they do. And it's quite fitting that it's on the back of the, the Boys' Brigade 100th anniversary for the junior section last week. Um, my constituency is Coatbridge and Chrysan, as I say regularly in this chamber, uh, is a, an old um, industrial heartland of Scotland and unfortunately, uh, like the fate that befell a lot of these areas, um, it, it has fell into uh, deprivation and while well, we're all working uh, towards um, changing that, it, it, the community still struggles. But out of that um, adversity, um, as is always the case, springs um, good and church and faith groups have been very much at the lead of that. And since becoming MSP last year, I have uh, learned firsthand uh, just exactly how much work's going on. So I'd like to say that I couldn't possibly mention in the three minutes that I've got left everybody um, that, that's contacted me or if I'd contact within the constituency um, that is involved in, in these organisations. But um, so if anybody watches it, please don't be offended. Um, some of the ones I would like to talk about in uh, Teen Challenge, uh, Teen Challenge, Cope Bridge are a team of volunteers from churches within the constituency. The bus ministry is a place where vulnerable people um, with addictions can meet for a couple of hours for food, company, advice and support. And addiction support workers are on hand there uh, to, to support in, in you know, the beginning stages of recovery. And upwards of 40 people can be uh, at these uh, individual sessions which take place right outside the high-rise flats at Jackson Street, which I mentioned specifically because it's recently became in the top 10 social uh, deprivation index area. So noticing that, the church groups themselves uh, responded to, to that information. And I've been up uh, a couple of times to the bus and witnessed the work that's been doing, that's been going on. Helping Hands Soup Kitchens, another example. In 1996, the St Vincent de Paul Societies of Coatbridge realised there was a, a need for a soup kitchen in the town. The purpose is to 
uh, relieve the need, hardship and distress of needy, needy people by offering practical assistance, especially providing a meal of hot soup or sandwiches uh, free of charge. It's open 361 nights of the year and the main service users are young men or women, again with uh, drug uh, or alcohol addiction issues. And the volunteers come from various uh, churches throughout Coat Bridge. I'd also like to touch uh, on the Conforti Institute in Coat Bridge. It's a, a global organisation, um, interreligious and intercultural, um, which promotes integral liberation. And I'm proud that this global organisation is based in Coat Bridge. Amongst uh, much of the work it does is volunteer in prison ministry uh, and a faith rooted social justice system, as well as operating a, co a, a food bank in the town. And just some stats for that food bank from 2016 supported 1,389 adults, 924 children and 338 pets. Staying on food banks, as other members have done, the, the Basics Food Bank based in Coke Bridge for Lanarkshire, um, uh, run by the Coke Bridge Baptist Church, um, has 51% uh, of all referrals are benefit or state welfare related. And in August 2017 alone, they gave out 1,489 food parcels, uh, 48 to families and 100 to individuals. I would uh, like to mention um, as well the, the, Co the Coat Bridge Community Orchard, which was set up initially through the Hope Church in Coat Bridge, which is involved in a range of other activities. The orchard, again, is something that helps a lot of people that are struggling with addiction issues uh, to come together uh, uh, and do and, and find and use, use other skills. And I was down at the opening of the orchard and was proud to be able to plant a tree uh, there for that. I could go on with so many, many more. Christ and Paris Church and the Closed Bank, the go-between in Townhead and the job, the job Club. What I probably would like to say is I started, and as Ross Greer touched on, where, where would Coat Bridge and Christ and be without these organisations? And maybe it's taken me to become an MSP just to realise the full extent of that. And then is it therefore my job to speak in debates like this, promote the good work they do and do everything that I can as MSP to help them and, uh, and, and continue. And um, I'll leave it at that, President officer. Thank you. Marjorie Fraser. Uh, thank you, uh, Deputy Presiding Officer. Can I start by congratulating Kate Forbes on securing uh, this debate and commend her on her opening speech. And I think the uh, length of this debate and the number of speakers who participated is perhaps illustrative of the uh, volume of interest there is in the Parliament in this particular uh, topic, because I think we're aware that across the country there are hundreds of church organisations and faith groups working to make Scotland a better place, and we want to recognise their efforts. So I'd like to echo the thoughts of everybody who's already spoken and join them in welcoming Serve Scotland, which is creating a formal place for church-based community groups to exchange ideas and best practice, and providing a forum to highlight projects making a big difference to people across the country. This, this good work has been going on for, for many years, if not decades. All, what Serve Scotland is doing is shining a new light on it, and that's very welcome. Th there's a general view that church congregations across Scotland are dwindling, or at least that's what the recent census and surveys have told us. But perhaps what we're learning from this debate, as Finlay Carson said, is that maybe it's less important to have bums on pews on a Sunday morning, if that's not unparliamentary language, uh, presiding officer. And what's actually more important is the holistic work that churches do, particularly in the wider uh, community in uh, reaching out uh, with the gospel and in terms of their uh, outreach work. And I think it's a practical illustration of Christian faith that is demonstrating uh, help, relief and love for those fortunate. The nature and shape of this relief has changed over time. And some of the partner organisations mentioned tonight are helping Scots with debt, poverty, hunger and mental health problems. In times of crisis, the church is often the crutch that many turn to. So I'd like briefly to mention three examples uh, in my own area of projects which have been identified by Serb Scotland. We don't traditionally associate poverty uh, with beautiful rural areas like Highland Perthshire. But poverty is just as aggressive and damaging in places like Aberfeldy and Bilocri as it is in the bigger cities. Residents in Perth and Kinross have some of the highest levels of personal debt anywhere in Scotland. And a recent Citizens Advice Bureau report revealed there has been a 60% increase in the number of people seeking charitable support in Perth alone. And it's in response to this that we've seen the formation of Christians Against Poverty set up to help provide the tools for people to deal uh, with their debt and give them the precious 
a perspective that is difficult to see when you're in debt over your head. As a result of their work, Christians Against Poverty have won numerous awards and have been recommended by organisations like Money Saving Expert. In 2016, I had the privilege of visiting one of their centres in Aberfeldy, which serves the Highland Perthshire area, and I was struck by the support they offered and the sheer number of clients making use of their resources. And there are no conditions on this help. You don't need to be associated with a church or even a Christian to make use of their services. There is no judgment, just a place where people can be listened to and helped. This is Christian faith at its best, and I would hope that the Aberfeldy Centre can continue to grow and provide these vital services. Ross Greer mentioned his church welcoming refugees from Syria. Last year, St John's Episcopal Church in Perth started an enterprising initiative to make migrants and refugees feel welcome. They produced over 3,000 uh, little postcards produced and distributed to homes and businesses across Perth with the words, you are welcome here and thank you for your contribution to the life of the community in a number of different languages. A very simple and effective way of improving community relations and just the sort of message needed in the wake of public discussions on immigration. And one final local group I'd like to congratulate are the Perth street pastors. Now we've heard already from, from David Stewart and from Graham Day and from Stuart Stevenson their own experience with the street pastors. So I need to say not much more about the excellent work they do. I had the privilege of spending some time with Perth street pastors uh, a short time ago and seeing the excellent work uh, that they do. And they exist in many towns and cities across Scotland. And I'm looking forward to hosting a reception in Parliament here in December to mark the 10th anniversary of the Ascension Trust which runs the street pastor programmes across Scotland and I hope to invite uh, fellow MSPs to attend and hope many will be able to come along. But just to close, uh, Deputy Presiding Officer, I think what this evening's debate has shown is how important Christian organisations and the Christian faith is to many communities across Scotland. And I'd like to finish by wishing Serve Scotland all the best as it continues its important mission. Thank you. I call Kevin Stewart to respond to the debate. Around seven minutes, please, Minister. Thank you very much, President Officer. And first of all, I'd like to congratulate uh, Kate Forbes in securing this very important debate, highlighting the work of Serve Scotland. Uh, and I want to thank, uh, through you, President Officer, all of the volunteers who are here in the public gallery. But more importantly, I want to thank you and all of the volunteers of, of Serve Scotland uh, for the time that they give. Um, certainly the government appreciates uh, your efforts. Uh, Kate Forbes has told me that it's often the case that the very people who are supported by Serve Scotland uh, who then go on to volunteer, uh, which is a tribute to both volunteers and the organisation as a whole. And my own experience uh, as a constituency MSP I find that that is very often the case, that those folks who have benefit, benefited from folk volunteering often take on the role of volunteer themselves, and long may that continue. Can I thank um, Shirley, who was at the Serve Scotland stall earlier on today, uh, for the leaflet showing the projects uh, in uh, my own patch in Aberdeen, uh, many of which I'm aware of, and like others in the course of this debate, um, I've got nothing uh, but praise for the Aberdeen street pastors who do uh, an amazing job in my city. Uh, and I, I, I'm always struck by church organisations and how they rally round in the Living Well Project Cafe that I recently attended at Ferry Hill Church uh, is another prime example of people uh, doing good things. Our country, presiding officer, has a, a very strong sense of social justice. Uh, and faith communities, including Christian communities, play a key part in this. Often they're amongst the first to speak up for social justice and against poverty and inequality, and set up charities or projects to take practical steps to make a difference. We still see that today, and their role is, is absolutely vital. And I want to pay tribute to the range of projects that Serve Scotland cover. They provide, on average per year, 10 million hours of annual volunteering and paid work across Scotland, which in itself is a truly remarkable achievement. Their approach to engage with communities nurtures and encourages 
the historical and theological concept of selflessness and encourages loving your neighbour. Words of faith put into action. Their work supports local organisations to effectively grow in their work, to provide services in areas of poverty and debt advice, homelessness, addiction, refugee support, food banks and night shelters, and the many other topics that we've covered in this debate today. Partnering with organisations that adopt a faith-based but not, not faith-biased approach allows Serve Scotland to use best practice from existing projects to respond to the pressing and particular needs of local communities. I'm sure that we all agree that the power of volunteers is one that provides tremendous strength to the work in communities right across our country. Helpers, volunteers, the people taking positive action and giving their time up for others, not for fanfare or reward, because it's, but because it's right and because of the rewards that volunteering brings to them. This is the golden thread that runs throughout our families, our communities, giving peace and innovation to change and making a difference every single day. We continue to face challenging economic circumstances uh, and people unfortunately continue to live in poverty in Scotland. Uh, and with further UK government welfare cuts due to bite deeper, the rollout of universal credit and certain policies, this is going to push more and more families into poverty. The reality is that this work will need to continue uh, and needs to be more important uh, to react to local need. A fairer and more equal Scotland is at the heart of this government's ambitions. And last year, the Fairer Scotland Action Plan included key messages that it will take all of us to build a fairer Scotland. However, we are clear our actions need to be hand in hand with community-based organisations amongst others. Serve Scotland is an important part of these efforts and actively works on achieving equality for all by alleviate, alleviating food poverty and building more connected communities day in and day out. This kindness and compassion is helping to improve the lives of people all over Scotland. Glasgow and Dundee's local serve networks are both unique with many churches, including the independent churches and Christian organisations involved in community projects. The networks create bridges between councils and faith groups, and also the richness being that volunteers are able to attend and share their experiences directly with council representatives. And of course, they contribute to greater interfaith dialogue. The launch event for Scottish Interfaith Week is taking place in Dundee this year and creates an opportunity for different faith communities to connect and engage in dialogue to foster mutual understanding and acceptance. And the focus of this year is creativity in the arts. Scottish Interfaith Week will commence on Sunday the 12th of November, ending on Sunday the 19th. And this is an opportunity for all faiths and those of none to highlight their way of life, whether it be through artwork, architecture, music or dance. We've already heard from many speakers uh, about the role that Serve Scotland has had in helping refugees, newcomers to our country. Uh, and it is very clear the contribution that Serve Scotland has made in that regard. We as a country have a strong rep reputation of welcome welcoming people of all nationalities and faiths, including those seeking refuge and asylum from war and terror elsewhere. And I want to pay tribute to the response of faith organisations and communities to supporting refugees who have come to Scotland. Our nation's values are clearly apparent by the humanity displayed to those most in need. Those fleeing persecution, war, rape and displacement have found a warm welcome in Scotland and the way our communities have responded has played a big part in that. And I'm immensely proud that we have received around 1,850 Syrian refugees 
under the Syrian Re Resettlement Programme since 2015. Uh, and I think that Serve Scotland and others should be proud for their endeavours in making folk welcome here. Presiding officer, it's powerful to hear that more local networks will be developing in the coming months. And faith groups and community organisations like Serve Scotland will continue to play a vital part in creating the, the, the Scotland that we all want to see. Modern Scotland is a strong, multi-faith and multicultural society. And I believe it is our fundamental commitment to d diversity and our celebration of difference that will help to make this country a better place for everyone. Finally, presiding officer, I would like to thank all of those folks who have volunteered uh, for Serve Scotland and more power to your elbow. Thank you. That concludes the debate and I now close this meeting. <laughs>